you know, uh, oh, A A A P I I M. Okay, uh, tell me something good. George Santos was arrested. Oh, that's he was liable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Mazel tov. Uh, what else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Something good? Anything personally good? What happened this week? Come on, Nash. What do you got? Personally good. It's Kundalini. Oh, right. That's your. What's Oh, it's uh, it's it's hard. It's a level. <laughs> For you. <laughs> I did it once. <laughs> I'm yeah, you. Oh. reading, uh, you know, I, it's I, underwater. I, <laughs> yeah. I have no problem meditating and I love yoga. It's just the breathing part is uh, crystal. If I have to be conscious of my breathing, I mean, it makes me a little nuts, but I guess that's the discipline, right? She's a little bit. Yeah, she's very All right. <laughs> yeah. I had a breath is the discipline, I would say. <laughs> Wonderful trip to Mega Camp, a Mega Leadership Camp, uh, this week, and it was uh, I learned a bunch of stuff and very very exciting uh, things so on the administrative side for fun to uh, to learn. He's already got a whole new uh, technology system that he has to uh, that is fully integrated into, uh, into into our market center command that he uh, he needs to lead. He needs to learn. He has the opportunity. He has a, an amazing opportunity. Aren't you excited, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> I actually believed that. <laughs> Who can tell? We can't see his face. Um, and then also uh, some very, very exciting pieces. It was, it was, it, you know, for me as a, in a leadership position, it's really great to, um, you know, when I go with the agents, it's it's about the agents and I'm pouring into people and, and uh, leadership camp is, is all about the uh, you know, just pouring into um, TLs and OPs and, and uh, market centers and market center administrators and such. So it's really a great opportunity for me to learn, and uh, which is important always. Uh, and so that trickles down to the banks. Well, on. thank you for going. It's yeah. my pleasure. Because, you know, trickle down always works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. We're yeah, trying to not make it a political conversation. Thank you, Christina. How are you today? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Let's move on to uh, something else besides something good. Uh, some um, some classes. Red Day is Thursday. Please tomorrow. sign up. Uh, yes, that is tomorrow. Please sign up. Uh, we're going to be doing some site beautification. Was there some uh, reason to uh, take us off that path? We move into some other stage. Yeah. Okay. We are doing beautification of, uh, of a, so this year we are working uh, with uh, Hope of the Valley again, which is Hope of the Mission, I guess now, uh, is they've uh, broadened their scope. They do transitional housing, really, really interesting, interesting concept. Uh, oh, uh, all right, a uh, very, very interesting concept to uh, that was, um, uh, that is creating uh, transitional housing for uh, for the unhoused, right? And they're little, they're tiny, tiny houses, like sheds. They have two windows and they have uh, two beds, and uh, they're part of a village environment with heat and air. Uh, the village environment has, uh, of course, all all uh, you know, like the showers and, and bathrooms. It also has uh, all social services and food. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity for uh, the unhoused to transition back into um, into into a uh, into a uh, housed environment. I'm trying to find the most politically correct way of saying that. Um, and so um, they're a really great organization. It's really uh, it, you you get to the heart of the problem. Uh, they have about 2,000 units that they uh, have built over the last uh, five years uh, or so. And we're going to be doing some, uh, some site maintenance, some planting, and we're also going to be building some uh, welcome uh, packages that include uh, some, uh, you know, a bag and washcloth and um, uh, 
toothpaste, toothbrush, and, and things like that. So uh, thank you to our uh, to our uh, uh, people who are sponsors, I guess is what we call them. Uh, uh, Mary Mendoza and Andy Kristinat and Ven uh, for uh, and, and David uh, Eric from uh, Large Monastero for helping us uh, support us and kind of fund our charitable endeavor for tomorrow. Uh, we, we can, uh, everybody needs to fill out a, um, uh, an intake. Uh, what is that called, uh, Tate? A volunteer form. Uh, they need to know who's on site. Um, and then, uh, and then we're also going to do some, uh, carpooling from here. Thank you for everybody. Right. Okay. Uh, bum, bum, bum. oh, next is, uh, it's only me. Yeah, it's just me, Tracy and Lorna are not, are not with okay. us today. Um, so for the diversity committee, we all know it's AAPI um, Heritage Month. Um, we're not showing any videos today, um, but we did want to bring awareness to this organization um, that was created just a couple years ago during the pandemic. Um, basically, AAPI was created to address the unique challenges faced by the AAPI community, including the rapid rise of hate crimes, the unprecedented impact of the pandemic on the AAPI businesses, inaccessibility to services due to language barriers um, and the lack of AAPI inclusion in industry and conversations around equity and diversity. Um, the AAPI LA is tackling these challenges by bringing together nonprofit and for-profit organizations that support or provide services to the AAPI community under one umbrella. So together, these organizations collaborate to help amplify their voices, work, and assistance to the community. Um, so in a nutshell, they provide, uh, they put on events, that smorgasbord that we were talking about last week, that was one of the events that they kind of uh, oh, worked. That's good. That's good. I'm sunburned. I'm sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun. Um, they had a whole section. They promoted a lot of the uh, different types of vendors that we wouldn't see on that smorgasbord. And, um, well, you know, they had the, the sochi stand and mm -hmm. it was good. Uh, so they're no, they're just they're a really great organization. Um, they do provide tons of resources. Check out their website if you are part of the community and you need help, if you need businesses, whatnot. Um, they're they're an excellent uh, initiative. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work on that. All right. Next is. All right. Uh, what is that? Keller. Oh, also, um, Keller Williams West Side is going to plug drive if anybody's interested uh, tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 4:30. Uh, that's at uh, 10960 Wilshire at the office there in the uh, common area training room. So, if anybody's interested in donating blood, they could do that at Keller Williams West Side tomorrow, also on Red Day. So Red Day, just if, if anybody doesn't know, Red Day is a uh, is a company uh, company wide initiative where we um, where we volunteer. Uh, it's a day of uh, a day of charity, day of volunteering uh, throughout the company, and you'll see uh, massive amounts of different how different people participate in this different offices. But we do it as a group, and we uh, we, we like those. So tomorrow uh, also. Uh, diversity picnic Saturday, June tenth. Uh, and location to be announced. It is fun to be had for all. I think we opened it up to its agents and families, yeah. spouses, partners, whatnot. Everyone should come. And, and so it's a it's a potluck. Bring your you know ethnic favorites or your cultural favorites, uh, and we will share them with people. Are we allowed to bring alcohol? You're not in the community. Yeah, I, we, we, we don't know where yet. Oh, so we're I'm meeting this afternoon to talk about it. So yeah. we'll, <laughs> I'll edit it. <laughs> that was wild. You're my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> I will make. I will bring <laughs> bring awareness to that. So. <laughs> well, they took a Facebook thing for masterminds, and they said, "What is the realtor's, you know, most outlet? What you can do?" And I I saw like three hundred something posts, and it all happened. 
No yoga. No yoga. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Mega Agent Camp is coming up in August 15th, 16th. I will be there. Uh, buy early tickets. Uh, they're on sale now. Sunshine got airline tickets for like a hundred. Yeah, where are you going? What's he saying? I got to know where you're staying. So uh, I don't know where you're staying. Going when I open, uh, like uh, if explain what the difference is between different conventions. Or Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, or but, at least not, like but that, mega camp is used to be it used to be that um uh the the well the difference between mega camp and family reunion uh is basically that uh mega camp is in one room two days gary uh gary talks and leads panels very very um high level conversations about uh, about the business and uh, what is effective in this moment, right? Driving to this moment. It's not platitudes. It's not. It's not. A, 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 it's. It's about how can you make the best of this moment, right? Um, family reunion, which is in February, has. It, it's a. It's a little more elevated in uh, in the general sessions. But then there's a ton of breakout sessions that you could choose to get more focused, uh, get into more focused um, uh, conversations uh, through panels and uh, and other agents in in very specific areas of the business, right? Uh, so Mega Camp is uh, is a great uh, a great tool for now, and I'd say Family Reunion is really building for the. It's it's about now, but it's also about like the new world. Yeah, Mega Camp, I think it's really more uh, topic specific with our market and like what we need to do. Where wow. family, yeah, family reunion is kind of like there's a little bit more social um, gatherings for them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no more like networking <laughs> more events. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. There's, <laughs> um, there's networking events. It's like there's a lot more general topics. It's helpful for especially new agents. And so it's going to be a lot more in that way. Like Mega Camp, I think you get so much more out of it because you do. I do. I really get a lot more out of Mega Camp because they take all the fluff away and they just went straight to the point, you know, very direct. No BS. No BS. Yeah, a little off a little. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Rob, you want to talk about your uh, your annual uh, uh, fundraiser for the Women's Crisis sh Shelter? Sure. Um, speaking of alcohol, um, about seven years ago, I created this um, fundraiser for the Women and Children's Crisis Shelter. Uh, the Women and Children's Crisis Shelter, by the way, we also have had an influx of men as well. We're seeing that a lot more. And um, the LGBTQ community we're seeing come in too. Um, we service uh, all of those. The fundraiser is designed to where um, it's, it, it, my friends joke around, it's got wine, it's cheese, and all the um, proceeds go to the shelter. So what can go wrong? It's in my side of town, which is Whittier. So if you can't make it, you can still go to the website and just scan the QR code. And um, there's a donation spot for that as well. Uh, we, we tend to have just a great time. Um, and it's a social event. It's not high programming. We have somebody coming up and speaking this year. We're going to have actually one of the people that came through the shelter talk about her story and what she's gone through. Um, and also, I want to let you know that even though our shelter is in Whittier, the shelters all network with each other because many times in your own community, you may have your abuser in your community. So what they'll do is that if somebody may be at risk and they're from Whittier, staying in Whittier, then we will send them to another community such as Fullerton or on this side of town or something. That way they can walk down Larchmont. They can be comfortable having still a lot of normalcy in their life and not have to worry about somebody may know them, somebody may text them, something like that may happen. So, and also at the same time, we get people from other parts of our town or other parts of town to our shelter. Um, so the fundraiser, that's what this is created for. Um, and if anybody would like to support, we'd be more than happy to help. Yeah, uh, and, and and even even just in a pure business uh, uh, perspective, if you want to see how what it's like to 
participate in your community in a high level. So Rob and Action uh, are both in this and, and in the other uh, the other organizations that we uh, spent just this really great lesson for everyone to understand uh, how to build value in the community as a business principle. Yeah. And there's one. And there's one. There's one. <laughs> there's one. <laughs> She used to absorb it. <laughs> She's just the yeah. Keeps yeah. Keeps the wine for you today. All right, let's go forward. Uh, upcoming classes. Uh, the morning show every day at nine a.m. Get your party started. Right, I am a fan. Uh, I do no parties, but uh, when I'm Tracy do it on Monday to Thursday. Next is Friday night. Christy, this week we have a short week. Uh, uh, oh, uh, what's today? The 10th. Uh, what's okay. happening? So, uh, okay. so, all right. Well, this is the 12th. Or, uh, this is next, next week. This is Friday. Right. Uh, keep every lead. Uh, Monday, uh, follow up with the leads. And on Tuesday, strengthen the relationships. Everyone needs to focus on that, right? Because you do business in this particular market. So you need a, you need a little hot shot of uh, understanding how to do that or some new perspective. Christine is amazing at that. Uh, tech, uh, tomorrow we have direct mail. And then on Friday, it's Dr. Sign 101. And then command overview on Monday, uh, website 201 on Tuesday, and database of people on Wednesday. Uh, we talked about that. And Andy. Hi, are? everybody. I will, uh, I'll see everybody tomorrow. I've got soap and some hand towels and all kinds of stuff. So see you oh. all tomorrow. Um, today is May 10th. Yeah. That means the CPI numbers, inflation numbers came out today. It was not as great as expected, but we did see a little bit of relief. There are reasons for that. So there was a little bit of a spike in oil prices in April, for one. And for two, used car sales were up 4.4%. Had used car sales been lower, it would have dropped the CPI number pretty substantially. So long story short, we're headed in the right direction. This summer, going into the next few months, um, we're we're on the downward trend with the uh, with the inflation numbers. So just keep your eye on that. Um, also, I don't know if um, Brian or Itati have put together the invite or not. I am doing a class next Thursday, a little lunch and learn, if you will, uh, food and facts. I am bringing lunch. We're going to talk about different loan programs, loan possibilities. There's been a constant uh, move and evolution of loan programs. Movement just came out with uh, what we're calling the Movement Boost Program on FHA loans, where we are offering down payment assistance for the three and a half percent, plus offering an additional one and a half percent to cover some of the closing costs. Um, things are moving. I also mentioned last week that Jumbo program that we've got. Um, it it's pretty incredible. Um, so next week, next Thursday noon, I'm bringing food. We're going to go over these things, a um, couple different highlights and, and bullet points of different loan programs so that when you're out talking to people, talking to clients or friends, um, these things sort of trigger and, and the light bulb goes off and, and you go, there might be a program for you. So that's what I got. Andy, so the CPI number, does that make any change in the uh, base of the interest rate? Yeah, yeah, we actually we saw uh, the the bond market mortgage rates um, opened lower today. So yes, it did it did signal a downward move for mortgage rates. So and we're it, it's just going to get better. Um, obviously, nobody can predict the spike in oil prices or the spike in used car sales. Right? Um, that's where that's where sort of the lag and why we didn't see more improvement. The shelter numbers that we've been talking about had had a, a pretty big improvement. Um, it'll just, it's just getting better. So, but yes, the answer is yes. We saw rates come down a little bit today. Thank 
Andy. See y'all tomorrow. All right. Mary Kay, you want to say hi real quick? Hi, everybody. How are you, Mary Kay? Advanced Group Property Inspections. Yes, very quick. Seven days a week service. I love you all for all your referred business. Um, um, I pick up the phone Saturday, Sundays, seven inspectors. I love you guys all. I don't want to take too much time. If you have any questions, please give us a call. I put my information in the chat already. Just know you sleep with us because we know how to present a problem and we check everything. So you don't have to worry about clients calling you later with a problem. Thank you so much. I love you all. Joy, I love you. I love every one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. We have yellow Mary in the house. Yes, Mary. house. Mary Mendoza. Come on, Mary. And I just walked in, so it's great. Yeah, no, I like this. We have a we have this makeshift uh, filter here. If any of you do not know, this is Mary Mendoza. She is a uh, she's our home warranty rep, and we love her. We've known her for many many years. They can still see. Yeah, they can see. I can see myself. Hi. There you go. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Mary. I'm I've been with Fidelity National Home Warranty and Disclosure Source NHD for 12 years and we've been working with this office. I know. So my a lot of people tell me I just always remember when you were pregnant and I'm like they're 6 and 8 now. <laughs> um not no more. So, but thank you so much for all your continued referrals and really if anyone isn't using me in here, I just really want to shake up your loyalty and encourage you to give me a shot. Uh, we have an amazing home warranty product and a very compliant NHD report. One stop. I'm here to order. I'm always a call and a text away. Um, we're offering, offering things like rekeying now and pest control. And they've bundled in all these amazing things to home warranty. And anytime we service your client's home, we send you a summary at the end of the month so that you know how much money that they're saving. And I'm really seeing right now, even with these competitive offers, generous amounts for the home warranty and really with everything going on it's reassuring for them to know okay I'm going to be able to call 24 hours a day if something breaks um you know it really it, you know listen yeah. home warranty is home is is it, they're not all the same but they're they're all they're nuances of each other what really what, what I find really delineates the, the good from the great is is the response right it's got to be solved problem when there's a problem, right? Yeah. And, and 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 that has been the core of you know our relationship over the years is really getting the problem solved for the client and having you know and having them have a good experience yeah. in the problem solving. You know, when it's good, it's good. Yeah, when it's good, anybody, it's good. And I don't can do it when it's good. Yeah, right. and it's, it's when there's a challenge. And Fidelity has been an extensive amount of time, especially over the last three years through COVID, really scrubbing their vendor list. I, every morning, get a very exciting email from someone who definitely is an engineer or data management and has all the statistics on our customer satisfaction, how long it's taking each claim to get parts, and how long it takes to answer the phone. And they're really dialing in on these steps. So before it gets to me in an escalated situation, um, a lot of times now it's getting rectified. I'm spending so much more time in the field with you because things are very streamlined. And now you go on to homewarranty.com, you can do a quick claim without even needing the contract number. So just trying to make it easy for you. I know how hard you work for each one of these leads. You're all fighting for them right now. And when it gets to fixing the air conditioning unit, this service should make you look good. And that's why I'm here. So thank you yeah. for your time thank today. You, Mary. Yes. Um, Mary, you had just mentioned um, pest control as yes. a new option. Can you tell about that really quickly? Because yeah. I've never heard of that in a home warranty plan. They, option. they just pay the deductible. Right now, ours is $85. They'll come spray for any type of regular bug critters um, or mice. They do not do infestations of rats. Um, but when you start to see those spiders, ants, and things of that nature come into play, I know some people get a membership service, so it's cheaper a month because they make a commitment where they're going to come all the time. But $85 is still, I understand, a really competitive rate to have them come out and spray, especially if you're just doing it periodically. Yeah, right? Yeah. And 
I mean, the rekey option is so popular because they can call the day it closes and get four keys, uh, I'm sorry, six locks, four keys. I always want to switch those. And it just really gets them going on how to use the home warranty right away. So thank you for your time. And don't forget to put me on your NHD Mary, as well, please. Thank Thanks, you. Mary. Mary, you have to tell them about the fact that there is new construction and home warranty. I know a lot of kids, you guys are doing if you purchase, we're representing a buyer that's new construction, yeah. it comes with a developer's fit and finish. Now, that is, may not always be enough. Fidelity has the new construction home warranty that covers year two and three, right? Actually, two to five. Yeah, yeah so that's the, and it's on the developer's time, and they say, well, we don't want it, buy for it, because it's worth it, you yeah. know? For them. For the buyer. Yeah, because they're not going to have to come back to you or whatever. Yeah. And I've used that with one of my clients for your company. So yeah, it's great. You just have to put it on it for the best part. have to get there and then go another one. Yeah. Mary, I'm curious, like, how many people renew the warranty after that first year? That's a good question. We have in the 80%. Really? 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 Wow. It's really high. And it actually used to be in the 60s. And through COVID and everyone started using their appliances, we, we get a, a renewal, very high renewal. We have people with us for years and years and years. Um, it goes up one time after the first year, $100, and then the rate stays the same. So people are using it and they're seeing the value of the gain of it after they got it for free the first year. Then they get that bill. And they're like, yeah. So, dang it. <laughs> and I'll say, I've, I've asked Mary questions. And she's very responsive, not only as a company, but Mary herself. Like, I'll be putting together contracts and I'll ask her, hey, what about this, this, and this? And she gets like that. Thanks. There's Thanks. also um, the change in the RPA allows you to offer your clients potentially a two year home warranty rather than one. Yes. Um, so before it used to be one year and you could have a, a seller kind of balk at paying the two year price, but now it's just a flat amount. So that's something to consider as well. What is a two year uh, policy? Yeah. What do you usually ask for before in the contract? How much? Uh, you can get like 25 for one year, 1,070 for two years. So it is slightly discounted. Sure. Yeah. So you ask for like $1,100, up to $1,100. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you can play with it in the program mm -hmm. to see that they're working. Alan, uh, Eduardo, and uh, Philip Rios all have their pieces to see what we've done. Right? Uh, all right, close escrows. Good week in real estate. We've got Bay Tennington uh, Keynes closed on Mansfield. Rachel and Tiffany for the Levin and Collins. Congratulations, Ms. Rachel. Uh, Josephine McReynolds. Uh, Dragona, congratulations. Heidi Davis, Amy Schoen, Steve and Chant, and Sarah Tom. All close escrows this week. That's good. Keep Brian busy. New escrows. Uh, ah, Monique Caulfield and Jordan Comrade. Uh, Kimberly Park, Kim Michael Schmidt. Uh, Kane and Penna and uh, Delon Adams. Uh, congratulations, Delon. Uh, excellent. Uh, closed leases. Nah, congratulations on six. Uh, no? Yeah? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, David Hitt, uh, David Hitt and Allen on uh, Schick. Uh, Thomas Robinson, uh, Antron, and Dayon Kerr all had closed leases this week. Okay. And so did Tracy Pence. He, he has some kind of, uh, he has some kind of, uh, all right. Yeah, all right. Uh, Laura Anderson has a few to come soon uh, on Templeton. It's a three bedroom, two bath, uh, 3,742 square feet in El Sereno. Price to be determined. So then there's that. Like El Sereno is like, uh, you know. It's a real pilot. Yeah. Uh, Long Beach Kitchen has a, um, a condo. It's a one bedroom, but one bath, 
726 square feet for $398,000. Uh, any uh, any co-agent uh, picture that uh, listed? Hey, Hello. Oh, she's on for tonight. Hello. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great property, it gets a lot of light, it's on the third floor of a four story building, um, very, very close by to downtown so it's um, very convenient as far as location goes. Um, what can I say so there is a, there's a pool a spa on the rooftop um, controlled access to the building with a Bluetooth fob. Um, and it comes with one parking space as well. And HOA dues are $343 per month. So it's an easy um, an easy entry condo to, to get into a you know, Long Beach condo there. So, yeah. Oh, and we will be open this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Jacqueline, uh, that price is to be determined. Laura doesn't have a price on that yet. You can reach out and talk to her, though. Okay, next is uh, Andrew Keller uh, on Somerset. It's two bedroom, one bath, 1,459 square feet for $1,295,000. This is uh, uh, Andrew, are you on? I believe it's his own property. All right. Manor. Excuse me? Yes. Uh, Pete and Brian Studenacher on uh, in Irvine on Waverly Lane have a five bedroom, four bath, 3,045 square feet uh, for 1.795. Uh, also, Pete has uh, a one bedroom, two bath on Hope uh, that is 1,394 square feet. For seven hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars, something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah the it's Laura Anderson on Elsmere. This is a beautiful house. I, I know it's a stretch of the neighborhood, but it is a beautiful, beautiful house. Incredibly redone. Uh, bring bring your clients who uh, are in that price range and not thinking about that area. I think it's a great option. It's a beautiful uh, property. Yeah. It really, really is like amazing finishes and like like very high end and kind of new for that area on this side. So beautifully done, super, you know, like close to West Hollywood, close to Beverly Hills, you can see Fair Village. Um, half hour to downtown, half hour to the beach, yeah. uh, you know, half hour to Hollywood, right? It's a great location. Yeah, it's boring. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 half hour to the morning, you, you get there in the morning. Okay. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> She's doing the same for me. I live in uh, uh, I make it in 20 minutes, no traffic. Just set a on. You are like a couple of minutes. Yeah. In 1964. Uh, next is uh, Lisa's. We got going on has a lease in the in, in the market block, one bedroom, one bath, 980 square feet for $3,100 per month. Uh, on also has a, a one bedroom, one bath, uh, 108 West 2nd Street. Uh, you know, it's like two floors, 800 square feet, $2,500 per month. Sir, oh, sir. Mm -hmm. Serge, uh, yeah, same picture, uh, incorrect in some way, shape, or form. Somebody, uh, Serge has a uh, four bedroom, four bath, uh, 1840 square feet for $4,800 per month. Or, uh, Chaucer, like we're at water, yeah. Uh, Alex Dion, uh, 1016 North, uh, yes, uh, 1016 North. Uh, Genesee Avenue, a two bedroom, one bath, uh, 850 square feet is 2506. Alex, are you saying that this is a TBD uh, pricing or? Um, oh, I'm sorry. I was responding to what uh, Jacqueline said in the, in the chat it's, uh, about Laura Anderson's property in El Sereno. That price was TBD, right? It's all good. 
Uh, next is. By the way, can I speak about my listing? You absolutely can. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's um, a really it's an upstairs unit. Um, there are eight units in the building, and this is uh, one of two of the two bedrooms. And it's just shy of like nine hundred. Yeah, it's like fifty square feet. Um, of course, includes uh, payment of gas of um, you know water, sewer, trash by the landlord, and um, on site washer dryer. Um, there was not initially an off off street parking, but the owner has changed that because they were taking up two spaces and they were getting a lot of questions about that. So finally, they're they're going to give up one of the spaces. So there will, will be a space um, ready anytime and super easy to show. And Alex, that's a, is, that, is that carpet or uh, some linoleum product? It is. It's, it's carpeted in there. That's the living area in the kitchen, which you see to the right is a linoleum. And then the rest of the space in the bedrooms is carpeted except for the bathroom, which is linoleum. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Is, it's our pleasure. Next was on the two bedroom, two bath, uh, 1,228 square feet. Sorry. First. Uh, 1,228 square feet for 3,850. He rounds up anymore. What's the deal? Uh, pocket listings coming soon. New development, Tiffany Park has a new development opportunity on Charnook. It is 5,219 square feet for 1,700. Seven, uh, seven, uh, one million seven hundred and seventy-five thousand on Chernook uh, with plans and/or aspirational images. One of the two. Uh, there you go. And anyone else have any pocket listings coming soon that they would like to share? Yeah. Hey. Oh. She jumped all over me. Spot for your. One million. $490,000. For almost 3,500 square feet? El Serino. El Serino. I don't need to put it in with all Yeah. So $1,029,000. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Don't complain. All right. Okay. We'll get by, of course. All right. Thank you. Michael. <laughs> Michael Flanagan, you could come up. Come up. There's no feeling. Something like that. Hello, everyone. Um, I have uh, one on Pick Pickford Street. It's um, just west of Fairfax, south of Pico, uh, Faircrest Heights, it's called. It's a three bedroom, three bath, 1900 square foot home with huge ceilings designed by an architect. He lived there. 10 foot high ceiling, swimming pool in the back, um, lovely place. It's rented right now and it won't be finished till July. But if you have someone, want to keep it in the family, if you have someone, I'll get you in there. And that's 1.65 million. Perfect. And then, bring it. If, if anyone has a, um, a, a buyer for an income property, duplex, right by Pico and La Cienega and Casio. Um, 1.5 million, you get two units. They're both two bedroom, one bath. One will be delivered vacant. And um, all in all, it's uh, 2,300 square feet of livable space. What uh, What is the uh, rent for the one that's uh, remaining? That is 200 or $2,212. So they've been there, they've been there a while, but I yeah. mean, the market rent around there is what, 3,200, 3,300? Sure. Sure. But it's a, a nice area and- um, It's a good DC area. Yeah. Can, so you, share the ad, can you share the address on Pickford? Hold on a second. Can I share Pickford? Yeah. Yeah, you can actually go look up um, 5951 Pickford uh, Street in um, for an old listing when I sold it last um, or bought it. Um, and you'll see pictures. It's unbelievable. It's really nice. And it's one and six nine five. Say that again. One six, one six nine, nine five. five. Yes, uh, one point six five. One point six five. For you, one point six five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. What is the vintage? 
Well, it was, you look up the um, MLS and it'll say, where is it? It says, uh, it was 2017, it was redone. It, you know, when they, it has an old age on the property, they keep one wall or whatever, but it's a brand new house, everything there from uh, 2017. All right. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, okay. All right, Nautilus, it's coming soon. If anybody has anybody looking for summer short term furnished rental, there's a two bedroom, two bath, beautiful mid century modern Franklin, uh, Franklin Hill on a cul de sac on a hill with a view. Let me know. Franklin Hill. Franklin Hill, yeah. What is the uh, Zoe Mega? So, uh, uh, so that Roxbury property that I talked about a couple weeks ago was finally getting the ball rolling. Um, when I went in for my listing appointment, my client broke down in a seizure, and so we had a oh my god, it was, it was a it was a yeah, it was in a bed. Anyway, it's better, um, low sugar. Um, so it's eight oh nine. North Roxbury uh, in the Beverly Hills flat. It's about 7,000 square foot main house, a house. It has a guest house, a pool house, and then it's got the pool. And then it's sitting on roughly about like 18,000 square foot of flat land. Um, we're pricing at 30,000 per month for the lease. For the lease. We're preferably looking for long term as opposed to short term yeah, only because, right. only because, you know, it's just it may not be worth having months and they're having to do everything so uh, we will it's coming furnished but it's the homeowner's furniture it's that's the caveat right <laughs> <But> you <laughs> live in <laughs> more expensive <laughs> than a Persian palace <laughs> <laughs> read it on the notes um, <laughs> is it really Okay. Um, so anyways, we can always talk about having it unfurnished if the, if the clients prefer that. Um, so, but we are offering it furnished. It's, I mean, it's so specific taste. <laughs> so it's not, so it's but it's prevailing in that area. Like this, like um, yeah, I mean, he's not really interested. I, we did talk to him about the sale. He doesn't really have a real reason to sell at this time, but if someone rents there for, for a couple of years and then we can always strike up a conversation if it works out well. Mm -hmm. But beautiful home again, like I said. So it's in the Beverly Hills flat in 800 yards. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah. Where I find my um, next weekend, not this coming weekend, is going to be the first weekend of open houses um, for my um, 5818 Den Avenue, four bedroom, two bath on a double lot in Valley Village slash Valley Glen, depending on what app you use. Um, so uh, and it's pretty cool. It just got staged. It looks great. I was supposed to send a picture in, but I didn't get it in time. So if anyone has any questions, come talk to me, please. OK. Next, we're going to move to Lisa. Yeah. 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 I believe so. Oh, no, we're going to welcome Lisa Arroyo from Anchor Point Commercial Capital, who's going to talk. Hello, Lisa, nice. how are you doing? Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, Lisa. Lisa does commercial Thank lending, right? Yes, I do. All right. Oh, oh, goodness. And you're a friend of Rob? Yes. Yeah. He's just going to give him his kudos. All right. I'm sorry I stepped on that for you. Did I get that? Oh, okay. Yeah. We're going back and forth with Paola. So thank you so much for having me today. Uh, this is just um, a very casual kind of meet and greet type of thing to introduce myself to you. Uh, just to give you a little background on myself, I have been in lending for longer than I'd like to admit, <laughs> 25 years. And I started in residential, but when the mortgage meltdown uh, hit, it hit my interest very hard. So I decided to bump it up and get into commercial uh, what I did as I went to the offices that I was calling on uh, in the residential arena, uh, and I, I reinvented myself, so to speak, and went and called on those offices in commercial. And I have found through experience that most uh, producing offices, such as Keller, 
uh, you guys get the commercial referrals, uh, but you just don't know where to send them. And unfortunately, a lot of the commercial players, uh, they don't want to touch what they consider small potatoes in the mortgage industry and in the commercial mortgage industry, anything under 5 million, 3 million. But there's a strong need for it. Uh, types of properties that I lend on, uh, anything above four units is considered commercial. So five units or more, uh, apartment buildings, uh, warehouses, gas stations, uh, car washes. Uh, we're doing a lot of mixed use right now with all the development up and around uh, Los Angeles. You find that there's a lot of mixed use out there where it's retail space on the bottom and then residential on top. Uh, one thing that I'd like to stress with commercial it's not as cut and dry as it is in the residential world. Uh, it really is a case by case. Uh, we can uh, get very crafty, if you will, or creative when we're offering financing to clients, cross, uh, cross collateralized uh, properties. Uh, we do full doc commercial all day long, but we also have strong stated income programs. Uh, so the weight of the of the commercial wheel is not only placed on the rent that the property is generating, but the strength of of the of the buyer as well. You know, bank statements if we see that there's you know thousands of dollars generated and being sent into their bank accounts every month, you know that's another uh, good strong staple in in uh, approval approval. So you know, my point today is not to shy away from from commercial, I think now more than ever, those of us that have been in the business uh, a long time, a few years, um, and that's personally why I got into commercial because I just felt like I needed to up the ante, so to speak, and be full service. Um, I'm sure that a lot of your clients that you've helped already uh, may own businesses, whether they own the, the building or not, but that would be a good way to reach out uh, to your clients and and let them know that you have a strong commercial source. Um, my broker, we, we are uh, a boutique brokerage, I would say. We're not like a huge commercial lender like uh, Marcus and Malachuk by any, by any means, but uh, we can give full service. You, know, you can come here, meet with your clients, uh, interview the clients, get the full application. Uh, my broker has been in commercial more than 20 years and uh, he's amazing. He has tons and tons of, of contacts uh, with different um, banks uh, and, and direct lenders, also private money lenders. Uh, and then another avenue that you could take is maybe getting a hard money loan at first, you know, maybe just to bridge that little gap, uh, get a hard money loan, get the capital in your client's hand, and then you have the buying power uh, to buy commercial. So that's really the gist of it. I, I wanted to make a light introduction of myself. And if you Guys, want to meet with me one on one? We can, you know, discuss marketing. I have strong uh, title reps in the commercial arena that, you know, can provide lists for you if you, you know, want to make a commercial night, cold calling night. Uh, just get out there and and push push the commercial business. Depending on the loan, they take a little bit longer to close, but you know, because the purchase prices generally are a little bit higher than residential, you know, they're bigger paydays. Uh, another thing, as you're calling on your clients. Uh, maybe they already own the building or units, or they 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 really want to just add to their their portfolio. Uh, that is another way to get in the door with them. Uh, maybe offer them a refinance because uh, it's not just purchasing. You know, the buildings such as this. There's owners. There's there's equity in it. You know, a lot of times these clients want to obviously keep their their portfolio going and building. Uh, maybe they want to refinance and pull some some money out, uh, and then that's where you would come in. On refinances, I do pay a referral fee. Uh, if you bring me a, a, a commercial refinance, I, I'm more than happy to to pay a referral fee through escrow. You know that way for through broker to broker. Uh, on a purchase, you know you make your commission, I make mine. But you know I I want to find a way to pay you guys if you do offer me a refinance and. Um, you know, it depends. It's a case by case, but it can be anywhere from a point on a, on up. So, um, are any of you uh, working it, with commercial it, lenders? It's, it's, you know, even a lot of agents do, you know, hybrid cases. Yes. Uh, commercial comes up and having a commercial lender relationship is important. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, uh, I like it. You know, I started out in residential, like I said, and, and, uh, but my focus in the last 10 years has, has been commercial. And um, I, I just find that the commercial clients are a little bit more cut and dry. You know, they're not going to nickel, nickel and dime me, you know, for a, a $50 fee or $500 fee. It's a more logical trip. Yeah. It's a business trip. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. it's all about the numbers, you know, if, if the numbers gel and look good. Um, the most important thing to remember on the commercial side is, Generally speaking, on commercial, it's income producing property, whether it's units, a building where you have, you know, suites leased out, it's all about the rent. So we take a percentage of the rent and qualify uh, that way with the rent that it's being generated. If it's something that vacant, if that, you know, it's a vacant building or whatnot, uh, we look at the, the, the rents in the area for that particular property, you know, forecast that, what, what they're generating. So, um, yeah, give me a call. I'll pass along my business cards. And like I said, if any of you agents want to meet one on one, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, and then maybe next time um, I could do more of like a like a teaching kind of class. class. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. I would get get some things going that way. But um, it's been a sincere pleasure meeting Thank all you. of you. Thank you so much. I've got a little while on the show. Let's all set up in the great oh, room. Okay. Oh, I like you even more now. <laughs> right? Hey, you're speaking their language. Yeah, right. It's always about the food. Uh, sorry about you guys at home. No food for you. But uh, wants and needs to fill the bucket. What do we got? Anybody wants and needs to fill the bucket? I have a want and need. Come on. Um, I still have my client looking for commercial space in. Um, Ventura, Ventura Boulevard, north side of the street, hopefully in Sherman Oaks. If anyone has anything like that, I think north side of the street. Like uh, she the asked street. for the north, and I said okay. You know what? But send me whatever. Like I mean, listen, I could probably talk her into whatever. Um, so that's that, and um, uh, yeah, I guess. Oh no, no, I also have a client who is looking for a um rental up to 1100 basically in this area for west hollywood um they really want to be able to walk from their home to like restaurants and stuff that kind of thing um they they need an adu or a detached office space they want it to be preferably single family um if there's a pool that'd be awesome um and it's just uh, what, what are you talking about the 1100 uh rent a month or, oh, I'm sorry, eleven thousand. Oh, sorry. Like what I said. Eleven thousand. Yeah, eleven hundred bucks. Yeah, no. So eleven up to like eleven thousand for a single family with an ADU, preferably a pool. If not, no big deal. Um, so if you have that, please contact me. I'm just kind of searching around. Things aren't looking good. Yeah, well. Okay, just want to cover. So we did a survey yesterday on the website. The last thing that is super cool. But one thing that I noticed is that a lot of the big name agents on the west side were actually sitting there almost disposing of the houses, which I didn't see for many years. Like yeah. Sally Ford and Jones, the two of them sold their house. Really? The large showroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just thought it was an interesting perspective on the market that even the agents that have built their name on the business for themselves, they're out there hustling again because the market has mellowed. Yeah. yeah well, was, the luxury yeah. market has taken a yeah. complete nosedive. I mean, the numbers are even before are, that with the, with the stock market being well, March was pretty accurate. over $10 million has been a struggle for the last eight months. Uh, because Someone people, like have, to take, people have to take their money out of the stock market, and you know, nobody wants to take that risk. Yeah, so you know, it just makes mm -hmm. it even more complex. All right, thank you, Sam, for your insight. Uh, who else wants needs? What do you need? Um, I saw that commercial. Okay, how many square feet? 3,473 to be exact. Well, yeah, Broadway and 9th Street. Um, that was my area. Um, yeah, 
store front. Mm -hmm. And I still have a the pocket Chinatown, which is very for sale. Yeah. Studio downstairs, studio slash retail downstairs. It's the a gallery. There's a gallery at the street level. It's on Chungking Road. Um, so when you go there during the day, it's a little creepy because it's completely shut down. Like, yeah, like for the, the Asian Pacific yeah. Islander yeah. month, like, please go to Chinatown. Go in the evening. I mean, they need the food. Um, it's a little dystopian going to say. It's not the time. No, but how close is it to the one? It's, uh, it's not far. It's, it's not on far. Like, it's, it's a couple blocks. It's, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. it's walking distance. Um, so it's over 3,000 square feet on title. It's like two something because it's got a massive, massive basement. Um, it's like a live work situation. So there's a three bedroom, one bath apartment upstairs. Gallery downstairs, and then a huge basement that does have a sound studio in it. Has a bathroom, washer dryer in the basement, all these little it's separate upgraded. rooms. It's uh, it has it's some light. Easy. I mean, it does have some Speaking light. Easiest for some sort of yeah. Um, Please and family. Family. One five. Five. One five. And like Caruso's that. building uh, this massive um, complex of apartments. Retail, the whole thing, like a couple blocks away. Uh, they're saying that it will be finished within a year. See, um, but what happened to that neighborhood is because of that development, he bought the grocery store, liquor store, all the services that were down there is that new development. So unfortunately, the neighborhood is taking a real hit because there's nothing near it now. Um, but when that's finished, it's going to pop. So if somebody wants to get in, well, cool. Yeah, I'll pop that. Yeah. It's a very cool area. Parking's a pain in the ass. All right, anywhere else? What do you got? Uh, looking for office space in Beverly Hills for about five feet of space. More details to come. Uh. Rachel? I have a fill the bucket. Um, I don't know if Andy is still on, um, but one of the um, escrows that I just closed is on these buyers have been looking probably a little over two years. Um, and then when they did their 2021 taxes, they made a very critical error and they wrote off everything. So when we got their new, you know, Andy needs all their new documents, their purchase price really tanked. Um, and it was a, a big struggle. So when they were doing their 2022 taxes, Andy got on the phone with their CPA and they worked together um, to kind of figure out a way to still make it all legal, um, but to write off a lot less so that we were able to yeah, really both. increase increase their purchase price. Yeah, um, I, have, I have friends who have, um, you know, like uh, small businesses who, you know, get in the habit of like writing off uh, as much as they possibly can, showing as little revenue as they possibly can. Uh, you know, good refinance, yeah. right? That would be me. Yeah. And it has percent interest, everyone. Yeah. These, yeah. these buyers were looking for a single family home under a million dollars. And it's like, it, we just couldn't find it. Um, so now that, you know, they redid their taxes, Andy's help. Andy was sending us listings to, you know, tons of other agents. And she would send me an Instagram, hey, what do you think of this? Would this work for them? Like, super helpful. So, Andy, I don't know if you're still on, but Smart. she was she is incredible. Up. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, anyone else wants to need to fill the bucket online? Yeah, did you get asked if you had uh, any of the other people that have been selling their homes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell her to reach out to Tracy Pence. Perfect. Thank you. I, can I say one more thing about my Ben listing that I forgot to put on coming soon? I found out that side lot adds to the whole lot size um, about. Uh, nine, uh, nine thousand, like two hundred square feet for lot. It's a huge lot size, so it is a huge it's selling point. Nine thousand. No, no, no. The total oh, okay. is nine thousand. It's like about nine. It's like nine one something. So um, the original, uh, when you look at it, you're like, oh, it's just a regular lot size. But then this side area adds a ton. 
So it's a really great opportunity. The house itself is like a California bungalow style. So it is a smaller home, even though it feels pretty open and big. So I don't want people to shy away from that because you have such a possibility to really grow on this property. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And there's room to put like a pool on the back or the side or yeah. I think it's everywhere. True. Sure. It's, it's talking to you. Anyone else? <laughs> One, you need to fill the bucket. Anyone online? Let's see, Tracy Pence. Oh. Oh, no. Brian. Uh, All right, guys. Have a great day. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for uh, coming and uh, talking about commercial real estate and bringing some food, most of all. Uh, and, uh, and we'll uh, talk to you next yeah. week. Yeah, right. definitely text me. That's best. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Tracy, what's the best? Five, eight, one, two, three.